In 2015, the CPDNH left the Keystone State for all time. In 2016, the 30T and 31T trains stopped moving between Canada and Enola and were cut back to Binghamton, New York. The trains still come through town, although now they're part of the makeup of the train 11Z. In 2017, we witnessed the last Air Products heat exchange take place and now the Ringling Brothers Circus held its last shows in May of 2017. I've said it in other videos, whether or not you actually like what you see in modern day railroading, it's always better than not to document what's still around, while it's still around. Because even if you don't like it, it's always nice to have it around to look back on and reflect on and to pass on to future generations. In 2018, we lost the A-Team. Their symbols were abolished, and now they run between Enola and Northumberland as the H-53 local turn about six days a week. In late 2018, the Norfolk Southern Regional Dispatch was centralized in Atlanta, bringing an end to the era on the NS when dispatches were close to the railroads they watched over. Spring is often said to be the best 15 minutes of the season. Whatever that means, though short-lived, it's the greenest time of the year and with its bright saturated foliage, the gateway to summer. The summer season brings out the best in everything, including rail fanning with longer days, warmer temperatures, and shorter nights. And as we close out the summer of 2019, we close out this year's summer special. And with the fall and the long, cold, bone-chilling, miserable days of winter now upon us, or at least me, the time is now to get all of the train chasing in that we can. It was 03.30 a.m. when I heard over the radio that train K82 was coming into Taylor Yard. K82 was one of three local switching crews, but unlike the K81 and the K79, the K82 also does the Taylor to Binghamton, New York turn on Friday and Saturday nights, or at least it did during the time of this video. More on that another time. This is both a reflection of, and a stark contrast to, this train's original purpose. Local freight for the area comes in from Binghamton on Sunday through Thursday on the H97 turn out of Binghamton, or at least it did at the time of this video. More on that another time. The other two nights, Friday and Saturday, were carried out by the K82. Originally, the K82 crew was the dedicated crew for this assignment ever since NS's takeover of the line in 2015. That is, until 2018 when everything got screwy and the train symbol started getting tossed around like pizzas. K82 has roughly a 5 p.m. to 5 a.m. workday, so by the time they made it into Taylor, they had just over an hour of legal work time left. That's why their tail end is sticking out on the north end of the yard. K82 put away what freight they could with the rest being picked up by the K81. That's why we're here. At 0630, I heard the K81 getting clearance to utilize the main line to run around the train to the north end of Taylor where we currently are and work the yard from the north. The other reason for us being trackside this morning is those two big Canadian Pacific GEs that I'm sure that you've taken notice of. The once natives of this region have been bouncing back and forth on these local turns for months. That's typically how motive power cycles in and out of Taylor. Road power comes in on trains into Binghamton and trickles down to Taylor to be used as local power. You saw that many times before on this channel with such specialty locomotives as the Pennsylvania, the Erie, the Lehigh Valley, the Illinois Terminal, the CNJ, the First Responders, and more frequently the Barcode Unit, which a rail fan friend of mine caught working the Luzerne and Susquehanna switch 20 miles down the line at Buttonwood.
A few videos back, I mentioned how on the rare occasions that the salt siding is empty, we can get some nice long range view of the trains and today is no exception. The K81 faded into the yard and things were quiet for about one half hour until the daily southbound 11Z out of Binghamton came into town. But not before another engineer bathroom break at the bottom of the hill. 11Z is a big one today and came down the pike with two dash nines and a DC Jeevo running by elephant style.
When I talk about railroading in northeastern Pennsylvania and all of its changes, today's Train 11Z, or at least what it's become, is the straight line that we follow on our journey. As I pointed out in video T139, Train 458 was the Canadian Pacific's predecessor to the 11Z, which ran as the NS11R on the Buffalo line between Sunbury and Enola. When NS took over the line in 2015, it became the 11R all the way between Enola, Pennsylvania and Norfolk Southern's Pan Am Southern partner, Pan Am Railways in East Deerfield, Massachusetts. In early 2016, the Montreal Enola trains 30T and 31T were folded into the 11R and 14R between Bingo and Enola. A few months later, the 11R train symbol was cut in half with the 11Z running south from Binghamton to Enola and the 11R running south from East Deerfield to Binghamton as usual. Are you confused yet? The reason that this is important to know is because during the days of CP, the 458 would usually work Taylor Yard on its way to Enola. If the 458 had intermodal containers, Canadian grand hoppers or large blocks of sand up front such as this train does, then you knew that it would be working Taylor Yard. This was precision scheduled railroading at its best or worst depending on your own point of view. When NS took over the line, the K82 switcher took over the train traffic between Binghamton and Taylor as we talked about which meant that the 11R, which became the 11Z, no longer had to stop to work Taylor en route to Enola. And to me, that was a good thing. And then PSR infiltrated NS and all hell broke loose. 11Z was the first casualty along with the Northumberland to Binghamton train 11A which was abolished in early 2018. Once again, the Z was burdened with dragging the Taylor Freight down from Binghamton and had to work the Taylor Yard while the K82 was relegated to local service. The end result was the 11Z train crews constantly outlawing before they could get their own train into Enola. Kill a few, save a life. This is how it was until early 2018 when the H97 assumed the Binghamton Taylor Freight turn five days per week with the K82 filling in the other two days. That's the story of how we got to where we are today. At least part of the story. The rest of the story will come in future videos. In days gone by at the south end of the Taylor Yard, a disabled Dash 9 40C waits for repair work on one of the maintenance of way tracks, track 18 to be specific. The injury is a seized traction motor necessitating it being pulled from the train it was powering, ironically, another Train 11Z. Glancing over the yard, it's every bit as hot as it looks as today's Train 11Z works Taylor. I've sped up the operation to keep you awake, but still, it will give you an idea of what crews had to go through and why so many of them wound up outlawing.
With the warm weather coming to an end, now is a good time to remind you of what you have to look forward to if you're anywhere up north. The warm and fuzzy aspect of winter is the constantly changing motive power on locals. Today, a Cascade Green visitor from the Great Northwest has come to mingle with the mainline power. Turning in the other direction, we see more western power of the Union Pacific. And take note, that's a Delaware Lackawanna crew on that train. The power took a unit train straight into Steamtown and now they've come up to Taylor Light and will pick up even more freight to take up the hill. Back on that hill and back to the present, a very short what I presume to be PO74 train prepares to head over the Poconos with seven lumber cars probably bound for Cresco. Just down the hill in Steamtown, the PO75 from Mount Pocono has just tied down for the day having come into town with what I think was all four operating six axles on the DL. I think. And as long as we're talking about six axles and Elkos, I just came from the DL shops at Breck Street and caught these images of the 41 sitting outside of the barn. Not sure how long it'll be before there are five big sixes running on the DL, but you know that I'll be here when it happens. By the time the afternoon came, the sun was out and the train 14R came up through what I like to call Mosquito Alley with a pair of DCs and an AC repowered C6M.
As I pointed out in video T139, what goes up must often come down, and in the case of the 14R, we have such a scenario. The same power that just went north on that last train came back down on its sister train, the 11Z, about a week later. I had no idea that this particular power was on the Z this day. I was shooting it because it was one of the last of these trains that we'll see in daylight through here until the springtime. During the fall and winter months, we'll have to be well south of Scranton to see them. As we talk about locomotive deja vu, I caught another familiar face earlier in the summer on yet another train 14R. I was in the right place at the right time as the train caught me by surprise. The last in the trio of black diesels was the NS SD70 ACE number 1096, a locomotive that we've caught before leading the train 37T earlier this summer. On another day during this summer season, more familiarity Man, that's a hard word to say. I have to stop using that word. Came when the 96Z unit rock train thundered its way through the alley. Leading the pack on this heavy train was the number 4013, which is another locomotive we've seen before. The 4013 was originally built in January of 1995 as the standard cab Dash 9 number 8782. It was rebuilt into the C6M that you see here three years ago in July of 2016 and it was a real treat to see it paired up to its sister locomotive, the 4014. Ironic also in that it shares the same number with the UP Big Boy that's currently making headlines all over the West. The 96Z was the last of 2019's rock trains through the area, unless of course you're counting the empty southbound sister train that came through two days later, the southbound that had the barcode unit leading the train. I missed it, but somehow it ended up back on the line, more specifically on a nightly H97 turn and in Taylor Yard working local service like we talked about in video T156, and ironically, where I missed it again. Another familiar locomotive came through this summer by way of the Illinois Terminal Heritage Unit, and just like the barcode unit that we just talked about, the 1072 also did time in Taylor working as the local switching power. It also came up earlier in the summer in several of the first of rock trains in and through the region. And then there was that. Yeah, we won't get into that.
Despite the many times that I've shown trains on this Y, I still have people asking me if the Steamtown Y is in use. Hopefully, those people are watching this video. The Y at Steamtown is used almost daily for moving cars back and forth between the Delaware Lackawanna at Steamtown and the Norfolk Southern Taylor Yard one mile to the south in Taylor. Most of the time, the trains going down to Taylor will use the north end leg and shove down to Taylor as today's train DL3 is doing. This is because the DL works the north end of the yard. In those instances, when light power goes down to bring cars back and also on returning to Steamtown, the south leg of the Y is used. Today's Motley mix of vintage locomotive power consists of the 2457, the 2453, and the 1554. The 1554 is an RS3 and one of five owned by the railroad. The four that operate are the three former Delaware and Hudson's and the lone Central New Jersey which wears its original paint scheme. The 2457 is a C425 that began its life as the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle number 315. Since then, it's been renumbered nearly 10 times, including for the Burlington Northern as it worked its way around North America. It eventually found its way to the DL, where it was renumbered as the 325 before receiving the 2457 number which it wears to this day. You can just barely see the locomotive cooling itself inside the DL engine shop on a hot day in June of 2014. The MHWA number 2453 is the X Erie Lackawanna C425 of the same road number that went west to work for the British Columbia Railway as the 803 and probably looked a lot like the 805 that you see here. I caught this beauty resting along Erie Boulevard West in Rome, New York way back in late 2005. The 2453 was a common sight in 2014 and 2015 before it went back north in 2016 to work in other parts of the Genesee Valley system. After a hiatus, it made spotty appearances back in the region including this past summer when I caught it resting at the DL shops down at Breck Street. The most interesting thing that I find about the 2453 is its tiger striped snowplow. No DL locomotive that I know of has this little anomaly. And for any smart Alex out there who think that you're going to run interference and throw the RS-11-1804 in my face, take your hand off the keyboard right now. The 1804 is not a DL engine and is in fact lettered for the Depew, Lancaster, and Western. Two more, two. 